Hi everyone, I'm Lucy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the five easy non-fiction reads that I think you will all enjoy. If you're not into non-fiction, then I think these books are a great way to start. Over the past few years, I've been really getting into non-fiction. It is a genre that I never really came to quite easily. I always kind of assumed it would be basically the same route as those like heavy history biographies and, you know, science books and stuff like that, which I was like, nah, not into non-fiction. So I kind of was just like, I wrote it off as a genre. However, over the past few years, a lot more like narrative, really interesting non-fiction I think has been published and I have basically fallen in love with this genre. I read probably about one non-fiction book a month and I have found some absolute gems out there which I really wanted to share with you all. So just a disclaimer, these are all my recommendations. I like a specific type of non-fiction but I think these are the most accessible forms of non-fiction if you've never read it before or if you're just looking for more recommendations or you're kind of in a reading slump, I think these books are the perfect books to start with. Before we start the video, please do make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I post a video at least once a week. It's been two weeks for the past few months which has been really Really fun to do so do make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video and let's get on to my choices so my first recommendation is a book that I discovered I think about a year and a half ago it's called the to-do list and other debacles by Amy Jones Amy Jones is a journalist in the UK and she basically writes very kind of relatable like more millennial stories I guess and the to-do list and other debacles is a book about her struggles with mental health it's in a really accessible format in that each of the chapters start with her to-do list of that week, of that day, whatever. And you can kind of see at the start how these to-do lists are affecting her mental health. Of course, this is non-fiction, this is a memoir, so these are all her own experiences. She tells it in the first person, her writing is really funny and really witty. And as you can see from these to-do lists, she doesn't check off like a lot of things that you know, she's kind of put on there for her mental health. This story is really, the crux of it is a mental health journey. It is about how Amy basically sunk to a breakdown essentially and clawed her way back out. Um, and I could really, really relate to a lot of the kind of thoughts that she was feeling. Um, just about the kind of like, you know, the kind of pains of being a young woman at the time and kind of the struggles of like, comparing yourself to your friends and not being where you want to be and being in a job that sometimes you don't like. Like there's all sorts of realities that a lot of people can relate to in this, in this nonfiction book. Not only do I think the to-do list format is really playful and really fun to read, especially because I love a to-do list. So was really happy about that. I also think Amy Jones writes in a really frank and relatable, honest, but also funny and self-deprecating style. So if you want something really accessible, really kind of like easy to read, you're in the moment you start reading it, this is the book for you. The second book is kind of a cliche and it's kind of similar to the first book I recommended, but this book is one that I fell in love with the moment I read it. It is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. This book is basically an account of growing up by journalist Dolly Alderton. It's kind of her thoughts of, you know, different topics of her life, her love life, her career, um, her partying, her friendships, but from when she was a teenager to when she's writing this book in her late 20s. The paperback version also has an updated chapter about everything she knows about love at 30. And what this book takes you through is kind of a woman in her 20s exploring you know life and basically exploring her 20s and basically coming up with the conclusion that romantic relationships aren't everything and sometimes the best relationships you can have and the strongest relationships you can have are with your best friends and with your family so i absolutely adored this book because when i read it i was in such a kind of slump i was having a bit of a maybe not a crisis but I was kind of in that mid-twenties, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life phase. I read this and then I was like, you know what? It's going to be okay. It's, it's okay. So I think if you're looking for some reassurance, you're looking for some relatability, you're looking for, like, excellent writing, because Dolly Alderton is one of my favourite journalists. She writes with such a kind of sharp wit. Like, she's so funny, so to the point, um, and I really enjoy her writing especially in everything I know about love. It's one, it did phenomenally well when it came out one or two years ago. 
and for good reason because it is a real special gem of a book and I think people would find it hard pressed not to like this. The third book I would love to recommend to you, there is kind of a theme, it is Girl Up by Laura Bates. Laura Bates is the founder of the Everyday Sexism Project. So this book is about feminism and proud. I read this book a few years ago now and what struck me is how accessible it was. This is aimed at a teenage YA audience. However, the takeaways from this book were grounding to me. So it's in a very kind of illustrated format, very kind of graphic led. So sometimes there are just pages with like big bold statements on them. It's not kind of a narrative non-fiction book like the other two that I've just mentioned. It's more graphic, it's more kind of illustrative. It's basically aimed at kind of, you know, helping people understand feminism and, you know, gender inequality and everything like that. I think it's an essential read if you're a woman and even if you're not, even if you're a man and you're kind of just wanting an easy, basic, you know, understanding of feminism, this is it. Girl Up is one of those rare books that I read it so, so quickly. And I think it's just like, that's what really works. It's kind of that easy, accessible format. I think also it's just an essential read. Like I said, it's super, super quick. You will get through this very quickly. So it's just important to have on your shelf. It's one of those books that probably will be on my shelf for a while. And I know with confidence, I'll be able to pick this book up again and just fall in love with it again. So I think it's a very important read as well. Obviously there's lots of research in this book. There's lots of surveys and some of the contents of this are really shocking. There is a lot of kind of like really harrowing stuff you know, rape statistics and things like that, which is so important to know. So I think in terms of like the most important book in this list, Girl Up might be it. The fourth book I really wanted to recommend to you for easy, accessible nonfiction is Money, A User's Guide by Laura Waitley. So this book is in a gorgeous format. It's literally about this big and it's supposed to look like a credit card. It's supposed to look like a Monzo, like a hot pink orange Monzo card. That is what kind of drew it to me immediately. I was like, this book looks so cool. However, this book is more than just the flashy exterior. This is an essential guide for anyone who wants a basic understanding of money. In this current climate, I think having kind of a understanding of money is essential. And this book kind of grabbed me in the middle of kind of a revelation I was having over financial literacy. I was reading a lot of financial bloggers, um, blogs. I was reading The Financial Diet, watching their videos here on YouTube. I would so recommend them, they are brilliant. But I basically just wanted to educate myself on all things money, from like pensions, to mortgages, to like ISAs, like everything. I just wanted to know it. And this book is so accessible really kind of digestible. What I actually, how I read this book is I would read it in short chunks. So I wouldn't just sit down and read it. I would kind of pick it up when I wanted to know something or when I was feeling like reading it. The chapters are quite short, so you can do that. But also like every single piece of information in this book is so essential to know. So I really would recommend, this is also an important book, just like Girl Up, because I think having a knowledge of you know, money and finance is like liberating and it's so important. So really would recommend money. It's one of the um, kind of more financial books that I've read that is really accessible. It is really kind of like basic, which is what you want. I think it's also really funny and very like, it has real life stories in it, which I really appreciated too. It's definitely not dry. If you're kind of thinking, why would I want to read a book about money? It's going to be super dry and boring. Not at all. Laura is a financial journalist. She writes, I think for the Times. She is very accessible. She's a brilliant writer. So I would recommend this book. If you're kind of looking for something more practical, and you wanna read more practical nonfiction, this is an excellent way to start. And finally, something a bit more self-helpy because I love a self-help book, what can I say? I don't often take a lot away from them, but I love reading them. And like the idea of trying to better myself is a nice idea. So I really enjoy kind of reading self-help, but in terms of accessible self-help, The Life Diet by Laura Jane Williams is one of the few I have found to actually really make me think about things. So this is only available in ebook and audio. It was kind of published as a super accessible digital kind of 
you know, essential guide. It's very short in format, so you will race through this. But in terms of like essential, easy, quick nonfiction books, this ticks all the boxes. This is how to edit your life essentially from your relationships to your work to your kind of day-to-day -day jobs. Like if you're feeling like overburdened and like everything is a struggle, then that is a sign that your life needs streamlining and Laura Jane Williams has all the tips on how to do that. I also found it a bit more of an emotional read because not only does she go into the practicalities of how to take what you want out of life and basically streamline it and create balance in your life, she also talks about the more emotional side of things like, you know, how to cut out people who are bad for you and how to realise what you want in life. So I really did relate to this book. I read it in, I think I read it in the bath in like half an hour, maybe a bit more, maybe an hour. Um, it was a long bath, what can I say? But I read this in one sitting and I took so much from it. I highlighted like every page. It is one of those books that you will just want to highlight on your Kindle. I just wish it was also published in a small format paperback or something. Cause then I would have it on my shelf for life and I would get so much kind of use out of it, I think. Either way, this is the most accessible self-help book. It's funny, it's really endearing. Enough waffling from me, go pick up The Life Diet. Trust me, you, will take a lot from it um, and that is all I have to say on that. So guys those are the five non-fiction books that I think are super easy, super quick. If you've never read non-fiction before or if you just want something you know easy and accessible to pick up these books are so right for you. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do hit that subscribe button. If you also have any recommendations of easy accessible non-fiction books do leave them down in the comments below, I can't wait to hear your suggestions and I'll see you very soon for another video guys, bye!